Welcome to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, we're going to look at ways in which you can load a molecular crystal, visualize it in different ways, and make measurements. We're going to use Crystal Maker's open command and open up the SIF file. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is to change the background color and we can do that using our rendering inspector. Let's choose a white background color and let's just change the color of the unit cell frame using the model inspector. Now the next thing we need to do is to try and tidy up this mess of the unit cell. Now it's very easy to be able to uh, repair fragments, uh, but we have some automatic commands to do that as well. Now if we move to the Windows toolbar, you'll notice there is a tidy button. Clicking that displays a popover and there's some handy commands in there. The first thing you might want to do is click on asymmetric unit. And for this structure, the asymmetric unit consists of a single molecule. Now we also have a nice command called molecular cell. Now if you click that, this, this shows the complete contents of one unit cell, but optimized to ensure that we have intact molecules. Now I should note that these commands depend on having accurate bonding between the atoms. Crystal Maker will automatically generate bonds when reading from a text file, and it generates bonds based on the interatomic distances. And the idea is that bonds are created if two atoms lie within the sum of their radii, uh, plus or minus 15 percent. Now what happens if you want to display more of the structure? You can do that using the range command. Uh, we can expand the range. And when we do this, we're displaying all atoms that lie within a box whose shape is the same as that of the unit cell. And obviously, as you expand the range, you're going to end up with fragments of new molecules. What to do here? Well, you can go back to the tidy button. Um, you can repair those fragments. That will actually expand the plot range and give you uh, uh, intact molecules that extend further out. Or we can simply hide the fragments. I'm going to go back to our molecular cell view for the moment. Now the next thing we're probably going to want to do is to start measuring uh, this molecular crystal. And something that's quite useful is to display labels for the uh, individual atoms. Now we can toggle labels on or off by element using the atoms inspector. We can also toggle labels on and off on a site basis. And we can toggle all labels on or off using the model inspector, using the little checkbox in the labels group. Now you can control the label properties in terms of the size and the content of the label using this group. So you might want to just display the chemical element or the atom number or the coordinates for the moment, let's have the atom labels and Crystal Maker is automatically set to auto position those labels to try and minimize overlaps between labels and bonds. You can click on the position popover and you can change that and we can reposition the labels in different parts of the plot, but the auto labeling works pretty well most of the time. Now the next thing you might want to do is to measure some distances between atoms. And an easy way of doing that is to move down to this uh, tool strip at the bottom of the screen and we'll choose the bond distance tool. And we can click on atoms in the plot to anchor them. And then this tool has a rollover mode that lets you interactively measure distances between atoms. If you click again, that locks the measurement and we can rotate the plot and see the measurement that we've made. Now let's suppose that we're not interested in distances from this hydrogen atom and individual carbon atoms. Maybe we want to measure the distance between this hydrogen atom and the centre of 
this ring. How do we do that? Now, we can measure distances in the plane of the plot using the screen distance tool, but it's not very easy to reposition the molecule to get that. So what we really want to be able to do is to use our bond distance tool and to add a dummy atom at the center of this C1 to C6 ring. So there's an easy way of doing that in Crystal Maker. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the arrow tool and I'm going to select one atom in the ring. Uh, and then I can shift click on the other atoms to select them or as a shortcut, we can right click and we can extend the selection to the entire ring. Now I want to put a dummy atom right in the center of this ring and I can do that by using the transform selection add centroid atom command. Now that prompts me for various parameters. Let's just use the default parameters for the moment. And we have a dummy atom, a gray atom here uh, in the center of this ring. And we can use that to uh, give us a distance from the center of the ring to the next molecule. Now, if we want to preserve that measurement, we can click on the create distance button that appears. Now that we have our measurement, I'm going to delete that dummy atom. I can do this in various ways. I can go down to the arrow tool and select the atom and delete it. Or I can go to the atoms inspector, select the row containing the atom and we'll press the delete key. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the tidy command and go back to the molecular cell now. Now, the next thing we might want to do is to get the best fit plane through part of a molecule. And we can see that these molecules, these are aspirin molecules, they contain rings. Uh, so I'm going to measure the plane of the ring. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to select an atom and I'm going to extend the selection to the entire ring. And I'm actually going to extend the selection further to the nearest neighbors. Now I want to fit a plane through these atoms. So I'm going to use the calculate plane through points command. And now we have a best fit plane through those atoms. The parameters for the plane are described at the bottom of the screen. We have the indices, we have the centroid, and we have a sum of squares error. Now let's uh, uh, rotate this slightly. And for this particular molecule that's of interest, um, I have some atoms that are outside the plane. And uh, let's take the C8 atom. I might be interested in the distance from the C8 atom to the ring. So let's just move that to the middle of the screen and we'll zoom in a little bit. And what's the distance of that atom from the plane? Well, we can use the calculate command to calculate distance from plane. And again, that's displayed at the bottom of the screen. That's 0.938 angstroms. So the next thing we might want to do is to uh, let's hide the log for the moment. And we might want to uh, measure the angle between two separate molecules. So let's take that's the first molecule that had a ring fitted through it. Let's take this molecule over here and we might want to measure the best fit plane through this molecule. So we're going to do the same things as before with we'll select a ring. And we'll extend the selection to the neighbors and we'll calculate the best fit plane through those points. And here we have that plane. Now the planes themselves are listed in the volume inspector. And we can change the colors of uh, these planes. So let's have a blue plane and a red plane and also their opacities. Now, how do we measure the angle between these two planes? Well, it's very easy to do. We go to the calculate menu and we choose angle between planes. And here we have it, 56.1 degrees. Now, once we've finished with those planes, we can turn them off by unclicking their checkboxes. Uh, and if we want to get rid of them completely, we can select their list rows and press the delete key to delete them. One thing you might want to just do is to maybe change the display from this uh, basic ball and stick mode to some kind of packing model. 
Our Crystal Maker comes with some preset model types, so we can switch to a space filling model. Now these are using our covalent radii. You might want to show some van der Waals radii. Now we can do that by going to this actions menu and we can choose radii van der Waals. And now we can see the sort of interaction volumes of the molecules. Now the problem with this view is that it's so dense you can't really see what's going on. So a better method might be to use a Born stick plot and to overlay some kind of surface. So let's go back to ball and stick and let's reset our radii to the uh, covalent radii that we were using before and let's put a surface over this model. Now we can customize our surface by going to the model inspector. Now I'm going to just go down to the surface group and let's turn the surface on and by default we have the van der Waals surface that we were looking at before. We might want to change that to a solvent excluded surface. And we can customize the opacity and probe radius. Now this is for a crystal structure. Let's say that we actually want to just show a single molecule and the shape of that single molecule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the unit cell and Let's just click on one atom in the molecule that we want to uh, focus on. And we can right click and we can do isolate selected molecules. And now we have a single molecule with the surface around it. And if we need to, we can change the color and uh, other properties of that surface. And this gives us a nice combination that indicates the bonding within the molecule, but also the overall shape of the molecule.